it is our present world that it is talking about. And as we have read already, it is in the days of these kings. <coughs> uh, <coughs> Christ's second coming is at the end of their days. Even Christ's second coming. Christ's second coming is at the end of the days of these kings. Remember, let's, let's, let, let's follow the process of things based on the Bible, right? All of what I'm talking about, all the wars, all the, the kingdom, all I'm talking about, evangelism, the final phase of this world, evangelism by the truth, or with the truth, of the word of God, all of that, the church without spot or wrinkle, all of that is before his second coming. And that's why I say when he comes the second time, all he does is stop, take up his people, and go, and the world just change into a bottomless pit. Mm. Dismal. No kingdom, nothing. Right? It is after the days of the kings of the present day that it is talking about. After the, pre the millennium, the earth made new is after. Christ's second coming is after the plagues, the seven last plagues. That's Christ's second coming. Let us follow the Bible and the process of what God is saying to us. It is after. It is not before. It is after. It is in when they are operating. The stone and the kingdom are one and the same. Notice that the stone and the kingdom do the same thing. Smash the image and destroy. Destroyed it. Verse 34 and 35 says, go ahead. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet, that were of iron and clay, and brake them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them, and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. These are symbols of Christ, kingdom of mortals, parallel the kingdoms of this world. These are practical, this is one thing about Christ's kingdom that we have not uh, studied into. Uh, <coughs> stone and the kingdom are the same, and so we see it cannot go or expand in heaven or in the earth made new. There is no growth or expansion of God's kingdom. For as much, verse 45, for as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. The dream is certain, and the interpretation is sure. God is making no mistake. It is for us not to make the mistake of not looking into these words closer than we have been or just overshadow them, just glide over them and go to heaven. Mm. God is telling us the preparation of the latter days 
It is telling us, he's telling us about the preparation of the latter days. And if we run from it now, then you may have a chance to see it again and you may not. It's, it's just how the world goes. The growth of the stone and the growth of the kingdom are the same. The growth of the stone, the growth of the kingdom. Did not Christ say his kingdom is not of this world? Yes, we'll talk about that. The kingdom is not of this world. God is talking about, is, is referring to what really Pilate was saying. <clears throat> the kingdom is not of this world doesn't mean the kingdom is not in this world. Christ was dealing with something different. He was talking about the spirit of his kingdom. <clears throat> See, Christ is the chief cornerstone. Yes. How do we explain the cutout of the mountain? Let's stick to Daniel for a moment. How, did, how do we explain the cutout from the mountain? Because all these details we may not believe or think it's important, or they're important, but they are. We have to look at each point and... Uh, try to understand it. It is a symbolic uh, prophecy, but God has coached in it the kingdom of mortals. And what he's saying, that nothing more is said about that mountain from which the stone was cut off. <coughs> uh, According to the symbols, the stone is a remnant from a remnant. The true kingdom in the last days, the stone grows that is in gathering of saints. Where will be the kingdom? Where? Why will it be set up? And when? We're talking about that. <coughs> and of course we will get into those questions. Jeremiah 33. Jeremiah will answer the question as to when and where. Go ahead. <clears throat> For lo, the days come, said the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, said the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Right. This is not ancient Jews, ancient Israel and Judah per se. This is modern Israel and Judah. Those are the subjects of his kingdom. You and I are descendants of those who were scattered. God is going to find this man and that man were born there. God has the mathematical calculation of every hair on our head. <laughs> every hair. You know, sometimes I see hair in my nose. Look in your nostrils, you see hair. Look. Sometimes you see hair growing uh, your eyelash, some may not have eyebrows eye, eye or I may lose it. Some may, I don't know if anybody lost their eyelashes. But wherever on your head, there's here, sometimes we refer to the hair on our head and 
and we believe that he's just talking about the normal head of air, right? So what is he talking about? No, he's talking about hair on your head, and if your face is your head, <laughs> then he numbers that too. Oh. My beard turns gray now, but his hair on my head, isn't it? He knows the number, even of the bald-headed man, or the bald-headed woman. Christ knows the hair of our head and he identifies. So what I'm trying to bring to our attention here now is that God is identifying his people, the Israelites, today. And he's bringing them to their own land. Did he amend that uh, covenant, that promise that he made? Did he change his idea? No. God will find, will fulfill his word with Israelites, but they are the descendants of those who were commingled, who were scattered, who were uh, taken captive and intermarry with the heathen, God will find a descendant of the same twelve tribes and they will go back to the land and others will be with them. That is what is referred to as the kingdom of mortals. And though it is strange to you, it is not something that is strange and will be strange much longer because even the world is catching on to it. And just like we lost our grip on the health reform, the right arm of the message, the world is running along with that they are running to, to Israel, grasping the message that God has given us about the kingdom of mortals, where Israelites will be gathered. Jeremiah is telling us about it. Jeremiah is answering the question, where will the kingdom be? And will there be a kingdom? <clears throat> And when? And Jeremiah clearly is telling us that for lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will not if, but I may be, that I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah, not two tribes, not those from two tribes, the Orthodox Jews, uh, the um, Arabs. <coughs> that are there now in the land is God's promised land and only believers will possess it in the latter days and that's where the bulk or the final gospel work will be ushered from. Ah, this sound like fairy tale or this sound but remember as it were in the days of now so shall it be today. It's not only with the marrying and giving in to marry and drinking and dancing and all that. It's about believing or, or taking lightly the word of God. Ah. So the other verse says that look. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he have done it and until he have performed the intents of his heart in the latter days he shall consider it. I tell you my brothers and sisters it is the intent mm -hmm. of God's heart. It is the intents of God's heart 
and he is not fooling the prophets to fool us. And so if anybody is telling you that it is not, they are the one fooling us or trying to fool us. Let no one rob you of your kingdom. Let no one rob you of what the Bible is telling us. As it said, the fear anger of the Lord shall not return until he have done it and until he have performed the intents of his heart in the latter days uh, he shall consider it he tells us the time it is clear as a noonday God has told us through Jeremiah the time don't just dwell on the captivity of the Israelites and that a few went back uh, and it, it, there was a gathering 1945 of World War II was ended. Um, <coughs> when was the treaty signed? And the 1948 or so when they returned. Uh, you can check that, that information when the Jews were uh, given the state. <coughs> No, they are just, Jews are just the two tribes representation. The 12 tribes, the 10 tribes, the, 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 the 10 tribes were scattered way back 1920, um, 1721 BC, and they have never returned. They were scattered. And so God is promising here that Israel and Judah he make sure to show us that it's the two tribes, the, the ten tribes, um, the twelve tribes. Judah and Israel refer to the ten tribes and the two tribes making twelve. And it is telling us. The unmistakably this scripture will be fulfilled. Believe verse who are sealed. It is true that Jeremiah prophesied about the return of the two tribes going back to the promised land. The difference with this is that the whole twelve tribes uh, this is based on 144,000. Let's read a little more in Jeremiah. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord of Righteousness. Now we look at we, the first verse that um, scripture we read was Isaiah. And notice that we come back to the days when I will raise up David, a righteous branch, and a king. As a capital king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. You recall the language of Isaiah. It is the same thing that Isaiah said long ago that he, Christ was born, the government on his shoulder, and he shall reign. Upon the throne of David, Jeremiah now is telling us that uh, David, a branch, a righteous branch, righteous. And that's why we say this kingdom of mortals will be a righteous branch, a righteous kingdom. Shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Judgment and justice 
it is implying that it will be in a time of injustice in the days of these kings. It is talking about, in his day Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is the name whereby he shall be called the Lord of righteousness. Jeremiah 23, 5 to 8, 20, 23, and verse 5. Look at that. Jeremiah 23, 5 to 8. Read that. Write it down. And Jeremiah 23, 8, and verse 20. And then Jeremiah 23, and verse 5. God bless you. Let us sing a song and we'll wrap this first section up because we can't give you too much. Uh, Not one sitting. We can't. We can't. Uh, this is something as a part of our series and we thank you for joining in with us. So let us sing a couple of songs and then we will um, do our final section of this. All right, thank you for joining us. God bless you. We love you much and we thank you for following us on this with since we start this series and other series and we hope that we will spur you to, to um, study deeply into the latter days things of God. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus.
right? X number, X title. More about Jesus. The great thing to trust Jesus, trust his word, because it's the only safe um, way to do it.
Jesus that we need and everything will become as clear as the noonday. So may God help us, may God bless us as we study his word. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, they wrote a lot of things. And yes, what they have written is more so for us than for them. The book of Revelation. the end summarize all the books of the Bible and meet and end so let's so let us continue to study the message that we are giving this time is a message that we must concentrate on All the other revelations, yes, is those part of the gospel that reveal, was revealed. And of course we have seen the fulfillment. They form the foundation of what we are given these days regarding three angels message and what I have alluded to this week is that many of us don't know the three angels message and that is not a condemnation to us in the Seventh-day Adventist Church not to know the Advent message or for it not to be taught in our institution as much. Why? Because we want to be popular really, but it is important to know the message of the hour. And although I'm not, and the Bible doesn't condemn you for what you don't know, it plays emphasis on what you ought to know. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. Ignorance of the word that God has given us is also no excuse not to know. So don't take it that we can just glide along. No, oh, the disciples they had to be go in the upper room of that upper room experience and get clearly the message of the hour. The message of the hour that we have today is that God is preparing us for a kingdom of mortals in the days of these kings. Hear the blessed Savior calling the oppressed. Oh. 
he realized between the animals, the vicious wild animals, and man in this kingdom, where the child will play on the cockatrices, on the poisonous sex snakes, then the babies will play with vicious animals. But they will not be vicious in the kingdom of God. There will be peace in the midst of hostility in the days of these kings. Bible says. Yes, the world has gotten a whiff of that, and that is why you see preparation for the war. And you see people are looking at Israel. Listen to the call of Christ some more as we study. just runneth into it and are safe in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here today. I 
Oh, that is Sabbath is the time for us to enjoy worship Amen. our Lord and our Savior. So God speed. Go in peace. Visit our previous videos. Share them and share this one. Because the word must get out that the final work, gospel work, the headquarters will be done, will be based in the promised land. God bless you. <laughs>